Taurus, and welcome to your monthly video horoscope for the month of December. Before we get down to talking about the astrology, here's wishing you a very wonderful, happy season, regardless of how you celebrate it, and a very prosperous new year. I also wanted to mention before we start talking further about the month's astrology, that I highly recommend listening to these horoscopes, both for your sun sign and also your rising sign. If you don't know what your rising sign is, I have a free chart calculator on my website. If you know your birth time, you can go there and you can calculate uh, your birth chart and find out where your rising sign is. Then you can come back and listen to the video for your rising sign. If you don't know your time of birth, you know sun sign, you're going to get quite a lot from that, uh, but also for a higher degree of accuracy, I would listen as per your rising sign. So let's talk about the month of December for you, Taurus, okay? You can strive for change. You can push your hardest to achieve your goal, channel all of your hardworking, devoted, passionate Taurian energy towards creating a breakthrough. But nothing is quite as powerful as that moment when the truth shines in on a particular area of your life. And that is the moment that the breakthrough happens, whether you like it or not. And why am I saying whether you like it or not? Okay, well, we both know, and hey, this isn't a criticism, I am pretty stubborn too, we both know that your sign is notorious for being a bit stubborn. You're ruled by Venus, you're an Earth sign, so you've got your values. You want to stick to them, you want to honor them, and that's absolutely right and correct that you do so. But sometimes, sometimes you block progress by not allowing a realization or a revelation to touch you deeply enough in order to create a very powerful and potent change. That's what I see on store for you this month. Before we talk about the particular aspects, a wonderful quote comes to mind by um, Albert Einstein, something to the effect of, if truth is what you want, leave elegance to the table. And I know deep in your heart, you want truth. But something about it might be difficult to face. You might have to um, be a little bit humble in the face of the recognitions that are coming your way this month, Taurus. It doesn't mean it's negative. It just means it's a sense of waking up to something that you will likely wish that you would have seen previously. But honor it in the moment. That's the best you can do. Let's talk about some of the important dates and the aspects that are um, that are coming up for you over the course of the month. I've broken these down into several sets of dates because it's quite a lot of movement, but several important points to talk about. On the fourth of the month, just a few days before the full moon, we've got a harmonious alignment between Jupiter and your ruler Venus. At the same time that the sun will be forming a harmonious angle with Uranus and Mars enters Aquarius. That's a lot of very powerful energy packed into a day. Now Jupiter is in a section of Leo at present that's called Mago, while Venus will be in a section of Sagittarius that's called Mula. Now there's a degree of very determined, um, even proud energy that's associated with this. And sometimes we, we need to push, and sometimes, this is going to sound awkward, but sometimes we almost need to be blind so that we can have a deep awakening. And that's what this energy is bringing to you, a eureka moment, a eureka moment where you're able to see something deeply that you actually likely missed before. And why is this coming at this moment? Well, it's because your ears are actually open. Mars is in Aquarius, and it'll be in a section of Aquarius that is called Shravana. Shravana is all about listening. Something is important to you, and that's why you've been putting your passion behind something. But a moment comes early on in the month where, although you've been in a state of limbo for a while, that one thing that's kind of been keeping you in a bit of a holding space uh, begins to have a bit of a breakthrough. After that happens, with the full moon that's on the sixth, which will be in your second house, there's something that needs to be expressed in terms of reworking the path ahead. This full moon will be in a section of Gemini that's called Mrigashira. And Mrigashira always denotes a slight bit of dissatisfaction. But it's also about taking something apart 
and putting it back together. And there's a lot of that in store for you, um, especially over the course of the coming month. Now let's talk about something very powerful that happens mid-month. There's been a very tense interaction between two particular planets, Uranus and Pluto, going back since about 2011. And this energy um, is coming to a peak yet again in December and once again in March before it finally moves on for you know, a good um, several decades to come. So you, you won't have to, I think, worry about this one again. Um, so let's talk about that aspect. Uranus is the ruler of everything that is random, revolutionary, and radical. And it's in Aries. And there's a part of you that's been desiring a liberation or a breakthrough based upon something which you hold very sacred and vital um, to yourself. This may also have been manifesting within the career sector of your chart, but what's much more important is that which is in your heart, a desire for freedom based upon a sense of, um, of values deep within your heart. But there's something coming this month is um, difficult, challenging, I'm gonna use the word painful as it may be. There's an awakening which shifts your philosophy. It makes you recognize that perhaps you've had armor on when instead what might have been more helpful is to let the armor down and let the awakening occur. Now, what's so powerful about this tense angle between Uranus and Pluto this time around is that within a few days after that, your ruler, Venus, will be forming a, the same tense alignment with Uranus and it will be conjuncting Pluto. And this all takes place with Venus and Pluto, uh, the Venus-Pluto side of things, I should say, within a section of the sky that's called Porva Ashada. Porva Ashada itself is ruled by Venus. And what Porva Ashada relates to, and this may sound confusing, but I'll explain, is the causal nature of the soul. The soul in its natural state, just attracting to itself the experiences, um, things that tend to happen in your life that you really need in order to prosper, grow, and evolve. But sometimes what happens is we put up a front. Sometimes there's something that we don't want to face. There's something we don't want to take a look at because to do so may mean that we temporarily lose face. We lose our sense of dignity or so we think, but really your dignity is not affected. The dignity is intact within the soul. Now there's a breakthrough that happens. You've been in a state of limbo. Something has been stuck for quite a while where you've really been wanting it to move. And what's been keeping it from moving is the fact that there is something that you have not been willing to face. There's a change that you have not been willing to undertake. Now, once you begin to undertake this change, I can't promise you radical revolutionary things moving quickly. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure you're likely still going to have to wait for a while. But now you know the direction that you need to move your energy in. And that's something that's exceptionally, exceptionally helpful uh, to have. Part of it's going to relate to um, how you understand another, how you connect to a particular relationship. And you may actually find within this particular connection that um, you're learning that you can't really change another person. But what you can do is accept that that person is who they are. That doesn't mean you have to live with it. That doesn't mean you have to, um, to be around them constantly. But it does mean that if you do want change in an interaction with another individual, you might have to just accept that they are who they are and you are who you are. The only individual that you can really change is yourself. And there are certain key parts of yourself which you don't want to change. And there are certain key parts of yourself which it could be helpful to take a look at and to evolve and grow. And those are the things that we're primarily concerned about. Once we get towards the end of the month, we've got a harmonious alignment from Mars to Uranus after the, um, or actually I should say it is pretty much coinciding with the tense aspect between Pluto and Uranus because that's gonna take a while to separate. But Mars will form a harmonious aspect with Uranus. And what's really powerful about this is the fact that Uranus is in a sign that's ruled by Mars, Aries. And Mars will be in Aquarius. So these two planets will very radically be exchanging their energy. 
and Mars will be in a section of Aquarius that's called Denishta. And Denishta is also ruled by Mars. So there's some very powerful energy uh, locked up within this and some very focused energy, which relates to a new aspect of yourself, getting to know yourself better through facing something potentially difficult about yourself. What, else, what actually helps this aspect even more is the fact that Uranus will be stationing. It's been retrograde for the last several months where a lot of internal changes have been created. And this is setting the stage for some actual progress in your life. Uranus will go in and it will literally overturn things slowly and over time and completely redirect and rework the course of your life based upon this new outlook that you're developing. Very powerful time, um, but this is just the beginning. I should probably uh, uh, warn you of that. It's not like everything is just going to be immediate and overnight. One day is one, one way and the next day is it's completely different. It's going to take some work on your part and it's going to take some patience on your part. This predates the new moon, which will take place in your ninth house. Opportunity, um, intuition, tuning into yourself and being willing to learn all very key ninth house points to take a look at. Towards the end of the month, something which only happens every couple of years, Saturn is shifting signs into your eighth house. Now, those of you who know astrology might be getting a little bit fearful about that because the eighth house tends to signify change and transformation. And sometimes it can, it can indicate some difficult changes. But really what this is going to relate to for you is a shift in path, a shift of values, a shift in how you look at things, and an establishment of balance and boundaries within an interpersonal relationship with another, um, a relationship which has been getting a little bit difficult, begins to finally have an opportunity to change. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. So many more changes that Saturn and Sagittarius will bring to you, all of them ultimately positive, if you work with the grand scale of how the planets want to work with you. I should point out, if you'd like to know a little bit more information on how the planets would like to work with you, I do offer a vast range of astrological services that are available through my website. I'm not going to run down the list. There's a link above. You can go visit the website and, and take a look at um, everything that's there. In addition to that, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube page yet, you might consider doing so. At present, I'm offering videos at least every other week other week, I should say, with the new moon and the full moon. Of course, you get your monthly video horoscopes. And hey, if I can fit anything else in over the course of the month, I, uh, I do so. Um, there should be hopefully, hopefully an interview with another astrologer coming up this month. I did an interview with another astrologer last month, and I'm going to um, host him this month and talk to him a little bit further about some key astrological points. Um, all of this available through my YouTube page. That's going to do it for your monthly video horoscope for the month of December, Taurus. Until next month, please do take very good care of yourself and have a happy season.